Hey guys, welcome to another video. Um, in this video, we are gonna pretend that we're going out for a cup of coffee. And you're like, Stephanie, I think I'm ready to take the plunge and buy my first horse, but I kinda wanna hear what your thoughts are on when someone might be ready to do that. And these would be the questions that I would ask you. First question I would ask you is, uh, what are your horse goals? Are they specific? So do you have an idea of the activities that you wanna pursue, whether that's you know competitive bar barrel racing or dressage, or maybe you're like me and you're like, you know what, I just wanna go out for some fun trail rides and go horse camping once in a while. But whatever it is, you know, do you have a clear, specific uh, goal in mind to do with this horse? Do you have some idea of what skills that requires? Um, does this horse need to have a certain level of training? Or are you really in need of a beginner friendly horse? Or maybe you've taken lessons for a long time, you're working with a trainer and you're looking for you know, the next step up, whatever that might be. Um, the one thing that I would encourage you to spend some time thinking about that you might not have considered is what are like the fantasies? What are the dreams? When you close your eyes and you play the movie of getting to spend time with this dream horse of yours that you're going to buy, what are some of the things that you are excited about that may not necessarily come up in a for sale ad? And to give you some ideas, um, for me with my first horse, I loved throwing a halter on him and a bareback pad and just cruising around the property at sunset after work just casually hanging out riding this horse. Maybe you've got grandkids, maybe you've got nieces and nephews, and you love the idea of going out on the weekends with the family and ponying the kids around on this horse. And then maybe during the week, you like to go trail riding. Um, so little things like that, those are not usually things that you'll see listed in a for sale ad or that you might not think of initially, but they may be really important, beautiful, lovely things that you wanna be able to do with a horse um, that are specific that you will want to look for when you are shopping. Now I would say most of us already have some idea of the breeds that we're attracted to, the colors that we really hope to have. I would say it is possible to be a little too specific. So be pretty clear with yourself before you go shopping about what you absolutely must have and what are the things that would be nice to have but you're willing to be flexible on. Um, and if you're not sure what those things could or should be, I do have another video where I talk about some mistakes that I have made purchasing horses that I will link down in the description. Number two is, have you done some horse things in real life? One of the amazing things about the internet, right, is that we can experience other people's experiences, get a lot of inf information, um, there's YouTube videos, there's Instagram, there's Facebook. Uh, there's so much at our fingertips that I never had when I was shopping for my first horse. I had Craigslist and that was, that was it. Um, and it could get easy to get sucked into all of that and get lost in it and already start having preconceived ideas and notions about what something is going to be like without actually having experienced it um, when it's not through a screen. So I would absolutely encourage you to make sure that you've had some real life experience as close as you can possibly get to whatever your dream is. Um, I recognize that there are some activities that maybe you, you can't pay to do lessons for necessarily, um, but as best you can get out there and have that tactile real life experience because you may find that there are things you didn't even think about, didn't even realize would be an issue or something that would come up that will impact your decision. I know a lot of you who watch my channel are thinking about getting a draft horse in particular, and I would encourage you to ride as many different horses as you possibly can to get an idea of how different horses feel, how different horses go. Because again, you may find that what you actually end up enjoying is different from what you thought you would just from watching videos and following people on Instagram. Number three, have you considered the hard parts of horse ownership and are you still committed despite those? You know, think about what you're saying no to. I think for most of us, having a horse is some kind of financial sacrifice. Um, so is that a sacrifice that you're willing to make? You know, it does mean usually for most of us, time away from friends, family, um, boyfriends, girlfriends, that kind of stuff. A big one that I didn't anticipate when I got my first horse is because I board my horse and I work, um, there would be many weeks where I was commuting in traffic to go see my horse in the dark 
in the winter time when it was cold and wet and dreary and I really just wanted dinner and to go home and go to bed because I was exhausted but my horse needed attention and needed to be turned out and needed some care maybe some lunging maybe some riding and so doing that in all kinds of weather uh, that's especially in the mud and in the rain I think for a lot of us is kind of like the not so fun part of owning a horse um, or you know I know people who have had their horse be injured and they've gone months without being able to ride their horse until their horse recovered and you're still paying those bills um, so those are some of the things that can come up when you own a horse um, that are the less glamorous parts but you know for me and for a lot of other folks it's still absolutely worth it at the end of the day but i do think it's still important to consider you know what those sacrifices might be for you number four do you have the money set aside for all your initial expenses and then have you budgeted for your monthly outgoing um, I could do an entirely different video on this, which if you're interested, let me know down in the comments. But, you know, basically it's going to be not just the purchase of the horse. You're also looking at purchasing tack. Sometimes tack will come with the horse, but, you know, it's good to budget just in case. Um, maybe you're purchasing a trailer, too, so that you can take your horse out. Uh, if you're having to go travel to purchase this horse, you know, paying for flights, hotels, um, gas, uh, having that horse transported back to you if that horse is you know far away the pre-purchase veterinary exam I personally believe is absolutely essential so having money set aside for that there's lots of of little expenses that come with making your first horse purchase that hopefully you don't want to get too surprised and end up way over budget so having a realistic idea of what those are and setting those aside is going to be important too. Number five is a big one. And I would say this might be the mistake that most of us make, at least at some point in our horse journey. And that is, do you have the skill to safely and independently ride and care for this horse um, without injury to you, others, or that horse? I would say, you know, a lot of us make the mistake of purchasing more horse than we have the skill or the resources to ride. And it can be a, a very heartbreaking scenario, a very dangerous scenario sometimes. And so making sure that you're realistic with yourself about what you can commit to, um, the level of expertise and skill that you have at this point in your life. You can always grow that though, right? You can always continue to take lessons. You can lease horses. Um, so there's a lot you can do, but I would absolutely 100% encourage you to be realistic with yourself and to do your best to find a horse that is a good match for where you're at. And if you're not sure, which, you know, a lot of us don't self-assess all that well, I think that's where bringing in a professional to help you, to guide you, to give you some realistic input about what would be a good fit for you, really good idea. That also leads into my next question, which is, do you have the beginnings of a support team in place? Um, it takes a number of people to have a successful relationship with a horse. You've got your veterinarian who's going to be seeing your horse probably twice a year, hopefully not more than that if nothing goes wrong. Um, you have your farrier who's probably going to be seeing your horse every four to six weeks or so. Um, you have hopefully some kind of riding instructor or trainer that's going to be guiding you, uh, helping you grow your skills, maybe helping you work with this horse um, when you bring the horse home, or maybe helping you purchase the horse. There are tons of specialists in the horse world which aren't necessary in a lot of cases, but they are wonderful resources to have if you have the money to spend on them. Um, things like massage and acupuncture and chiropractic and a saddle fitter. I mean, the list is endless. And if you've got the budget for that, that's wonderful. Again, it's not always necessary, but sometimes you do run into things where you're like, you know what? this doesn't seem to be a training issue. I'm not quite sure that this is a, a, a foot or a, a vet issue, but maybe this person would be able to kind of help us in the next step of our journey. So there's those. And then there's peers, you know, having friends, um, having people who maybe you board with that you learn from or other, other people that you meet through a horseman's association or a riding club. I've learned so much from the people that I've ridden with and that I've boarded with and it's nice to be able to try and find you know one or two people that you can kind of connect with and share stories and kind of be on the journey together do you have someone in your life who will protect you from getting screwed over <laughs> um do you have someone that you are bringing with you 
maybe to help you purchase this horse? Or do you have someone who's more knowledgeable than you are that you can show some videos to and say, hey, I'm thinking about this horse or uh, these are my thoughts. You know, what do you think that you can kind of run by? It's so helpful to have someone outside of you who can give you some kind of assessment of either yourself or of the horse that you're looking at and help you decide if this is a good match. And if nothing else, maybe that person is there to help remind you of what it is that you said that you truly wanted and where you were gonna draw the line so that when you go shopping, you don't end up bringing home a horse that really isn't a good fit. And that brings me to my next question, which is, are you willing to walk away when you see red flags? Buying a horse can be a very emotional experience. It can be very exciting. Uh, there's a lot that goes into it. It's, um, it's a very personal choice for a lot of us. And we want to not only have a horse that's a good fit for what we want to do, but hopefully, you know, we kind of gel with the horse's personality or there's there's some attraction there that we're like, yeah, this is going to be my, my new riding companion and partner. Um, that being said, sometimes things will come up and you may be shopping and think, gosh, this is like the perfect horse, except for this little piece that's not ideal. And that's where you know, really having decided in advance and again, maybe having that special person in your life that can help you walk away if you need to, to kind of say, you know what, I decided that I was going to draw the line here and, you know, I really don't feel like this is going to be the best choice for me. I think I'm going to wait for another opportunity for a different horse. And then at the end, you want to be able to bring your horse home to uh, a ready to go environment. So, you know, do you have the boarding facility picked out? You know, do you have a reservation with them or have you talked to the manager so that they know you're bringing this horse home? If you're planning to board at home, do you have the fencing set up? Do you have um, the hay purchased? All that kind of stuff so that you have everything ready to go to bring your new horse home. As I mentioned before, I do have some other videos where I talk about mistakes that I've made, ways that I have completely screwed up and paid for it that I am happy to share with you so that it hopefully will help you in your journey. And I will link those videos down in the description. You are always welcome to leave me a comment, ask me questions. Um, if you have something to add to the conversation, I would love to hear it. I really appreciate you watching. Hopefully this was helpful for you and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care, bye-bye.